coughing. He made me laugh so much that I practically choked to death. And then Stephen Pacey came into the men's room where I was choking and said, Are you all right? People die of this, you know. And this made me laugh even more. And I woke up this morning and um, I'm having difficulty swallowing. So we thought we might get the paramedics, that would liven up the convention, wouldn't it? So we'll just see how we go. Are there any doctors here? Nurses? Or anybody want to be? Oh, you are. You are a nurse, aren't you? You want to stay behind afterwards, take a look at my throat, and anything else that's bothering me? Thank you. Right. Well, it's my day sorted out. Uh, no, no. Good morning. Now, this is very early for me, and I'm sure it's very early for you. So, uh, it's very good of you to come in this early hour. All right? I'm sure you're terribly disappointed that Tom Blake is not being a Christmas carol and anything like that. I'll do it for you if you like. Yeah. I mean, I always think those cratchits are so boring anyway, aren't they? I mean, Ebenezer Smooth's got the dough, why shouldn't we hold on to it, you know? Uh, right. It's the Donald Trump of Victorian England, wasn't he, really? <laughs> Unfortunately, think Marlon wasn't there. Now then, um, why don't we have uh, questions and answers and things like that? Uh, if anybody wants to. Is that the idea? Yes, ma'am. Tell us about the season in Worthing. Tell us about the season in Worthing. You don't really want to hear about that, do you? Oh, you do? Oh, all right. Um, I have a company now, my own company. Nobody else will employ me, so I decided to do it myself. And uh, we did a season of plays in Worthing. Have you ever heard of Play. You may have seen a movie called Die Alone for Murder. Right, yeah, that was good. I played the Ray Land part. And my wife played the Grace Kelly part in the blonde wing. And I tried to murder her. And um, then we did Gaslight. Do you know that one? I played the Charles Boyer part. And my wife played the Ingrid Bergman part. And I tried to drive her mad. Yeah. And uh, one critic said, I'm really worried about uh, your relationship with your wife. I would divorce you. <laughs> so there you are. And then we also did a comedy called Relatively Speaking, which starred a short, balding gentleman called Michael Keating. <laughs> and uh, was directed by a brilliant director, the Mike Nichols of uh, England. Mike himself. And, uh, there you are, it was uh, quite successful, except that it was a hot summer, so it was people didn't come to matinees and things like that. It was great fun. The next play we're going to do is called Macbeth. Uh, not many really laughs in that one. Well, not intentional, anyway. So that should be quite fun. Uh, so there you are, it was an enjoyable time, and a number of uh, you came over, and I think you enjoyed yourself. I've brought over with me for the uh, Charity auction, some programs from it. So if you didn't go there, you can bid for it or whatever and give the money to the farm and uh, get to look at the program. Okay, well, that's not bad, is it? I think that's a fairly full answer to your question, isn't it? Not bad for nine o'clock in the morning, no. I mean, it's three o'clock in the morning, my time, you know. Yeah. Yes, when Irish eyes are smiling. Yes, my grandmother was Irish. Oh, yes. Um, what would a, you're going to England next summer. Is there anything particular planned? What did you have in mind? Uh, all right. Well, um, yes, we'll be doing uh, the Scottish play, Macbeth. So you must come and see it. Uh, we haven't got the schedule. We have got the schedule, but we haven't printed it yet. But around when, when in... Uh, oh, right. <laughs> well, in August, we're doing it at the Nottingham Theatre Royal. Have you ever been to Nottingham? where the naughty sheriff came from. I've also played that. Yeah. Well, there you are, I'm there, it's a very nice play. Oh, coffee, how wonderful, thank you. I really think I need that much. <laughs> she saw my eyes this morning. Yeah. Thank you very much, Judy. Thank you, that's Judy who's looking after me. You know, she's my minder. You know, escort, you know what that means? Yes. Babysitter, yes. <laughs> Apparently everybody likes that job. I think it must be a terrible job you have to go and get coffee for people like me. 
And what if you get lumbered with the person that you don't want? Suppose you're a really big Tom Baker fan, and there must be one. Uh, <laughs> and he's not up yet, that's why he's not doing a Christmas carol. <laughs> and, uh, and you get me. You know, that'd be dreadful, wouldn't it? But there you are. So, uh, how about Not to worry. Good morning, how are you? Early, isn't it? Uh, good morning. You would like to ask a question? Uh, who's going to play Malcolm in the Scottish play? Malcolm is the young prince, very handsome, he's supposed to be. Who? <laughs> Stephen Pacey. He's too old. <laughs> he's, we're casting a young guy of about 20, uh, who uh, I haven't met him yet, but apparently he's blonde. And, so it looks like a younger version of that guy who does Baywatch. <laughs> Who's he? Yeah, well, he's sort of a young version of him. So, uh, hope he can act. Yes. Well, so do we. Um, but there you are, somebody like that. So there's good, that's good, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay, the lady asked, what has been my favorite role so far, and do I prefer film or stage? Well, if I could get into the movies, I'd prefer it. You know, Steven Spielberg, help, you know. Uh, we don't have much of a film industry in England. Consequently, in Britain, I should say. Uh, consequently, I haven't done many films, TV stuff, of course, which I enjoy because they pay more. And uh, you can work on it and refine it and get it right. But the theatre is more immediate, rather like here. I mean, I'm getting an immediate reaction from you. I mean, no tomatoes, as you would say, have come over yet. But as I hadn't had breakfast, I wouldn't mind. But I, so, uh, the immediate response is, is nice. So I can't say that I prefer either. I like them both equally. My favourite role so far? Well, I have several. Uh, I played uh, Elvis Presley. Musical play, and I loved doing that. It was wonderful. <laughs> and I also played Martin Luther in a play called Luther, and I also played a character called Buckley in a play called Buckley. <laughs> and I also played Dracula once. Mm. Mm. And I got a letter from a lady saying, "I leave my window open for you every night." <laughs> So um, I've had some, I've been very lucky to have done it, had some nice parts. Mm. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Every panel has a favorite story about their critics. Uh, excluding Michael Kesey, what's your favorite actor? Excluding Michael Kesey, what is my favorite actor story? Animals. Oh, animal story. <laughs> it's difficult to exclude Michael Kesey from that. Uh, my favorite animal story. Well, there is a, there's a, it's quite an amusing actor's story about animals. And uh, how can I do this? Are the children present? I mean, uh, this is a little tricky. It's, uh, I'll tell you the story anyway. The theory goes that uh, dogs are like their owners. Is that right? And so it's decided to do an experiment uh, with the three dogs. The dog of a mathematician, the dog of an architect, the dog of an actor. So they got a room and they put some bones in and they put a female dog in. And then they put the mathematician's dog in the room. An hour later they came back and the mathematician's dog had worked out Pythagoras' theorem in the bones. And they said, this is wonderful. They put the architect's dog in. They came back. He had built a replica of the Taj Mahal. In bones. They um, put the actor's dog in, and they came back an hour later. The dog had eaten all the bones, had his way with the female dog, smiled, and said, When's my day off? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So that's one of my favorite Alan stories. It's true. Next, we can talk about all sorts of things. We don't have to talk about Lake Seven or Doctor Who, but please, let's talk about Doctor Who. Um, uh, I'll just take this gentleman here, because you have one more. Uh, scenes in Blake 7 that ended up on the cutting room floor. Most of it. <laughs> um, no, well, one, one or two. Uh, yes, there were a number. Um, there's one where um, we're going up a, a cliff, and Stephen Pacey, who plays Tarrant, who's much younger than I am, and fitter, is racing ahead. The teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sun used to reflect off his teeth. <laughs> All the baddies would be blinded for me to shoot, you know. <laughs> and Glynis Barber was behind him, who had a suit, it was a very pretty girl. And I was behind her, and suddenly she started to slip. So, being a gentleman, I put my hand up. <laughs> and you have the shot of me with my hand on Glynis, and Glynis going, What are you doing? <laughs> and we had to reshoot that one. Uh, that was quite fun. Meanwhile, Stephen's up there going, where's the band lights? <laughs> We're having fun down there. <laughs> and then there was, uh, there was one very early one where I had to walk across and say, all right, Blake, you may want to go there, but I don't want to go. <laughs> and being really much. And I walked across and said, all right, Blake. <laughs> he, was, he, he caught me in his arms. He said, oh, I can't remember the episode myself, to tell you the truth. But we were all running through a minefield. And I was the last to go. Uh, President Bond, thank you. And uh, David Jackson, this big man, as you know, um, was on the other side. And I had to come through this minefield. And the uh, special effects man said, now, Paul, you've got to keep going because it's dynamite, you see. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> So, um, and it's on a trigger, so that once they trigger it, they all go. I can't stop them. There are eight charges. So when you go, just keep it. Well, no one has moved so fast. <laughs> Carl Lewis, no one. You know? And David was at the other side, ready to catch me. And if you look carefully in the film, there it hugs me to him. <laughs> and I'm going, got that look, thank God. <laughs> So uh, that, that's actually in, that didn't end up on the cutting room floor. So. Yeah, well, there were one or two things. No, there were others. But, well, it was a lovely shot uh, once in the location when Stephen had a hair net on. <laughs> because it was raining and uh, he had to keep his curls nice. <laughs> there was a shot of him and I go to something like Stephen and he goes, yeah. <laughs> I knew you all of it. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, the lady asked about when I did play Elvis Presley, did I sing it and do I have it on tape? And the answer to both questions is yes. I sang um, a little bit of um, goes uh, on me close, hold me down. So saying, I will spend my whole life loving you. That one? Okay. And I also saying, um, what else I sing? I forgot. Oh, Always on my mind. You know that song? And I sang, uh, If I Can Dream. That song. It's a tough song. And I sang that one, No Lord, You Gave Me a Mother. You know? That one. Hmm. And I do have it on tape, yeah. Wanna buy it? around. Uh, the voice for Ike was an actor called Peter Tuckman. Uh, 
I think it's a very nice man. Is that what you want? I mean, more like, I didn't have too much of a personality, but otherwise, I, I didn't have a hot for it. I, but, uh, you know, it was supposed to be very heavy, and everybody had to carry him with two hands. You know, as I carry him with one. Uh, I noticed that, and I thought, you looked tough. Uh, it was actually, sometimes he was heavy, and sometimes he wasn't too bad. Yes? Is there a Blake 7 blooper reel? Yes, there is. Is there any way... Is there any way... Uh, theft? <laughs> Illegally, a blooper reel. Yes, there is one around. Yes, I've seen some. Uh, in fact, I think there are two. There's the clean one and the dirty one, you know. <laughs> I haven't seen the dirty one. There's also an audio tape. I had that at home, actually. Sally on it, and they edited it to the boys, and, and she's going, Oh, Blake! <laughs> and then, she's, at one point she goes, Oh! or something, and then at another time she says, Oh, you got it! Oh, right, oh, you have it! Oh, so who brought that? Oh, they, well, there you are, they're going to be in the charity auction, so there you go. Oh, right, oh, fine. So there you are, a couple of them there, so they're the answer to your question. Thank you, Debbie. So I should imagine that. I'll go for a bit, somebody will let listen to me. These are all nice people. Yes, who, who hasn't had a question? Who would like a question? And then we'll come back to somebody. Uh, we start with that gentleman and then come that way across. Sir? Did Peter Tubman play the professor who created All Right, who was called Ensor? No, he didn't. It was played by an actor called Derek Farr. Sad in that day. Uh, who was quite a major British film star in the 1940s and 50s. Can you all hear me, all right? Yeah. At the back? You can? Mm -hmm. John, you can hear me? At the back there, you just wave to me. Can you hear me? Yes, it's you, you're on TV, yes. <laughs> right, anybody, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, what happens is there's a play in London called The Mousetrap, which has now been on for 40 years. It started in, well, nearly 40, it started in about 1950, 51, too, with Richard Attenborough. You heard of Richard Attenborough? Yeah. He played this starring role. 20 years later, I did it. They changed the cast every year because uh, you'd be dead if you did it. And driving nuts. That's for a year. I don't know who's doing it now, but there's going to be a big party because it's the manager, Sir Peter Saunders, who put it on. It's his 80th birthday this year, so there's going to be a big party for him, and I'm invited to that. So that should be nice. It's free booze. <laughs> Where are you going? Are you leaving? What are you doing? Preparing yourself in the ashram for uh, Tom Baker or something like that? No, no, no. Yes, no, sorry, I... Am I writing another book? Uh, not this moment, but I, I am, yes, endeavouring to write another book, uh, which is a sort of thriller. But when I was coming over on the plane, I, I suddenly had an idea for a sort of futuristic uh, a book. Maybe it's ten years in the future. So I might write that as well. That's the trouble, you get distracted, don't you? Yeah. But eventually it'll come out. I do have a a play, uh, what I have written, uh, and that is, uh, I brought a copy of that, that's, that's going to the auction as well, so I might like to read that, I don't know. We're going to present, how do I, we're going to present it to my company sometime next year, so um, I'm afraid you can't do it, but you can read it. It's a thriller, sort of. My throat's better. Well, I'm hungry, I skipped breakfast. But... Right, um, just in passing, I mentioned that. Uh, oh, no, I have very kind, but no, you have the sound, please. Yes. I see. 
the lady asks uh, what I miss most about England, I suppose. Um, and also, uh, when you go to England, you will find, that those of you who have not been, that if you ask for ice, they give you a little cube. <laughs> they also have interesting phraseology, like a very grand lady, uh, who I know who worked for the American government, said to me, she said, I had the most terrible experience this morning. Well, oh, well last night, she said, I went in late, and I wanted a wake-up call. And the porter said, don't worry, madam, I'll knock you up at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Which is quite legitimate. But uh, in our country, it means I will just knock on your door, make sure you're away. But uh, you can imagine, she was frightfully grand. <laughs> See, there are differences in culture, yes. I miss tea, good tea, nice cup of tea, uh, which is difficult to do. And uh, I had a lady in the uh, restaurant here, I had a cup of tea, and she said, we're trying, we're trying. She said, <laughs> uh, but your coffee is great. Yes, I miss a cup of tea sometimes, but you don't miss much. I mean, in the United States, I mean, you've got it, haven't you? You've got everything you want. You pick up a phone and say, I want this, and please. Well, sometimes you don't say please. Um, and you get it, if you pay for it. Good morning. Do I kill Janet in the next play as well? No, 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 I won't be in it. Uh, oh, the one I wrote? No, I won't be in the one I, I've written. Uh, I'll direct that, probably. Because it requires a very handsome man of about of about 40. And then it requires a very handsome man of about 50, and I'm too young for both. <laughs> no, I thought, uh, they're quite nice parts, actually. Janet read it, and uh, it's a part she wants to play. It's a mystery, and I bet you don't know who did it. At the end, she didn't. And there are only five people in it. One gets killed. So it's a three to one shot, I'm guessing who did it, and she didn't. Not bad, eh? I'm quite pleased about that. Right. The lady asks, uh, she's very complimentary, thank you very much about me. Uh, are there any American actors that I admire? Many, many American actors. I had the privilege of seeing an actor called Christopher Walker uh, play Corey Davis, which is the part I want to play. Uh, in New York, and he was excellent, wonderful. I think Chris Walken is a very dangerous actor, like that. And uh, of course, in the movies, Robert De Niro, uh, Gene Hackman, Robin Williams, you go, you can go on forever, can't you? I think you have the best, the Americans are the best movie actors in the world. I think that. And I would like to work with all of them. Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we do, uh, we're going to do a fellow. And the one actor that I would have loved to do, I think, and I don't know, well, I was, well, right about that is James Earl Jones. I know he's done it already, but uh, I think it would be wonderful <coughs> to come over to Britain and do it. It would be terrific. Yeah. And I play Iago. Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. But uh, I would well ask, but I think it might cost us too much money. Yes, yes. We're only a small outfit, outfit, you know, cheapskate productions, we're called. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Have I ever worked with Patrick Stewart? No, no, I don't work with bald people. Uh, no, I haven't actually. No, no. But we have mutual acquaintances. I have with Marina Vertis, who plays Sergio Simon, who plays. Um, thank you. She's nice. Mm. She's English. Mm. She is Marina Vertis. She's English. Did you not know that? Well, there you are, that's a trivial pursuit question for you. <laughs> if you have a play, play on my side, you'll win. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Before you were able to really make a living acting, what kind of work did you do? Well, before I could make a living acting, what kind of work did I do? I mean, did you have to do fill-in jobs? You hear so much about... Oh, sure, yes, I did. Yes, I did. I sold peepholes. Do you know those things you put them in the door so you can see who's outside? Yeah. And I once sold one to a little old lady. And of course I put it into my light. 
And she came along and she said, I can't see out of there. I said, well, stand on a chair. <laughs> so I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a discount. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did. I did that. Uh, <coughs> quite funny. Mm, what else did I do? Uh, oh, I distributed leaflets. <coughs> Saved this building. They locked it down the next day. Uh, things like that. And I worked in a tailor's for six months. Um, gentlemen's outfitters. I used to get my clothes quite cheap, you know. Not now. Um, so I guess that fun time. Yeah. I never was I never waited on table yet. <laughs> right, no, any more? Yes. I, of course I promised you another question and I didn't come back to you, I made a point. I uh, did a, the first episode of your, one of your series called Dark Justice. Um, and how did I get involved? And where did we film it, the lady asks. Well, um, go backwards. We, we filmed it in Barcelona, Barcelona, which is in Spain. Just in case you... It's the site of the next Olympic Games, Barcelona. I didn't see much of it. Because I was working with the American film crew, and they work hard, they work very hard. Uh, it was just that they called England, they wanted an actor called Malcolm McDowell to play this particular role, guest spot. At the last minute he couldn't do it. So they rang England, which is nearer to Spain than the United States, and said, have you got a really nasty guy? Uh, and they really, actually, they really wanted Marlon Brando type. And they said, yes, we've got a nasty guy. For some reason, they, it was me. And, uh, and when I got there, they said, oh, but we wanted a fat guy. So I said, I'll act a fat. <laughs> and the director said, you can do that. <laughs> I said to Nero, did it? You know? So he said, OK, act a fat. So they close cropped my hair, and I went with a deep voice and all that. And I looked heavier than I was. Did, you saw it, didn't I? And, I'm a lot older. <laughs> uh, so I wasn't too happy with it, but that's the way they wanted it. So I did it, and it was a really nasty piece of work. I actually killed a, a mouse in it. There was a white mouse on the floor. He kept white mice for pets. He had a sword stick, and he was talking to the hitman. He was saying, get it right, or... <laughs> and he killed the mouse. And then he flicked it up on the end. That was cut. <laughs> that wasn't it. So there were some very nasty moments in it that they cut out. So um, that's how I got involved in it. And uh, they flew me out, and I had a lovely time uh, working with the crew, Spanish and American, and uh, American actors. A lovely guy called Rami Jada, who plays the leading role. And Rami and I got very well. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was a pleasant experience, although I didn't think the part was quite me. I would have preferred to play it thinner. <laughs> you know, kind of better looking, you know, with, with beautiful girls draped all over me. I said, how about that? And he said, we don't have the time for it. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, that was fine. Yes, yes, ma'am. How long did it take me to write the Avon book? Thank you for bringing that up. I'm sure and those of you who have not heard of it will be delighted to know that it is on sale, I think, in the dealer's room. I wrote this book about Avon. How did I write it and how long? Well, I came to a convention such as this, and the question that I was asked most was, well, what do you think Avon was like before the series began? I then followed uh, that convention by going to stay with Terry Nation in Los Angeles. And I said, what do you think it was like? And he said, how the hell should I know? And I, I said, but you wrote it. And he said, well, that doesn't mean the thing, you know. <laughs> so uh, then we were talking to his agent, a literary agent, and he said, well, maybe somebody should write it. And Terry said, oh, no, I can't be bothered. You do it, Paul. <laughs> so I wrote an outline, submitted it to a publisher, and they said, sure. I mean, I was amazed. So then I did a play in London for three months called Run For Your Wife, a comedy. Yeah. Have you seen it? Like I turned it down, actually, because I said, I want to write this novel. And they said, well, why don't you just do the play in the evening? You can write a novel during the day and get paid. <laughs> Smart. So I did. So it took me, well, from 
starting to finishing three months. I didn't, I wasn't very disciplined, you know. I didn't start at eight in the morning, God. I used to sort of drift in around at 11 and go, Avon smiled, that'll go. Uh, uh, things like that. Hence the reason it's rather a slim volume. But, um, that, that's, that's how I came by. And then I was going to write a sequel, and then Terry said, no, I'll write the sequel, so I said, okay, fine. But, but he never has, as far as I know. Yes, Beth. Oh, a uh, clip that you've seen in the video room here is called The Adventure Game. Well, this was a game where, you, I don't remember much about it, to tell you the truth, but uh, it was a game where you had to get from one place to another, picking up various clues, and then you not being gobbled up by the floor or some monster or whatever. And they said, oh, we'd love you to do it. So I said, well, you know, I, I'll do it for the pleasure, but um, what's the money like? And, uh, it was pretty good, so <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do it. But I didn't really understand it. People gave you clues so that you could move from one room to another. I think I got gobbled up, didn't I? No, 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 you didn't know. You, had, you didn't say what the problem was, uh, how you could solve it. And you look an idiot, you know. Because it's a really simple thing, like two and two. And you're going, two and two, two and two, 22, 20, it's four, of course. Um, uh, Ridiculous. But it was quite fun. It was a long time ago. I was younger then. Haven't changed a bit. Can you all hear me? You all right? What about you lot at the back? All right? Having a good time? Uh, right. Yes. How did I learn the lead role in Blake Seven, having started off as a minor character? <laughs> Charisma. <laughs> I should have a cigarette to celebrate that one. I mean, I can't help it that I'm older and 
I was when I didn't talk to her in the Siberian. I, mean, I know it's hard to tell, but I... Uh, no, there's nothing very much that bothers me. There's some stuff I've done that I would wish that you could see, um, but unfortunately uh, it hasn't been shown. It is unlikely to be. Although there are one or two things that I've done recently that you might get. So, it's a uh, swings and roundabouts. You know. I don't mind too much, what's your... Yes, sir. Do I have any memories of working with Lord Peter, uh, Ian Carmichael and Lord Peter Wimsey, which you've had out here, actually? Yes, I do. Yes, I enjoyed that very much. I played the murderer. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. So, uh, that, was, that was great fun. Yes, I enjoyed doing that. Have you read the, the Dorothy L. Sayers books? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that was called Murderous Appetites, which I did. I played the character of Mr. Tallboy. Tallboy. <laughs> Yes, isn't it? No. So, would you ever do a play on Broadway? Would I ever do a play on Broadway? Sure, you're making me an offer. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, of course. The Great White Way, yes, absolutely. Um, every actor's dream. And of course, American actors want to come to London. Mm. Uh, Jack Lemmon said, you know, I'm really so thrilled to be here. He made his London debut a couple of years ago. That he was delighted. But I mean, he had to wait a long time, didn't he? Uh, so yeah. I guess I will too. We shall see. We shall see. Yes? Uh, Jack Lemmon. Yes. <laughs> the lady asked about the complexity of the relationship between Avon and Serverland, and did I look forward to the scenes with her? I got to kiss her a lot. So that was fun. Um, yes, well, I enjoyed the complexity of the relationship. I mean, it was quite nice. But once she, in uh, one episode, uh, tried to seduce Tarrant, I thought, oh, forget it, you know. I mean, <laughs> so, uh, yes, well, that made it interesting, the complexity. Uh, I loved it when, you know, you, you, I would hold her in my arms and say, it's like, oh, you do this and I'll see you burn, you know. And then kiss her, oh, I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> this was fun. Although there's one scene, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, we were rehearsing and I heard uh, somebody die. But two more, a little dog scent. You know, a sausage dog? A very tiny one. And I had taken her to the rehearsal room and I was doing a big scene with Jackie and Pierce. Jackie in my arms, and I was like, he does this wrong, kill him, you know, and all that sort of acting. And suddenly she started to laugh. I said, am I that bad? She said, no, look down. <laughs> and there was a little dog. <laughs> so, uh, that was, was quite fun. We didn't keep it in the shot, of course. Right, any more? Who's on next, by the way? Who's after me? Tom. Stephen and I had 
search the case very carefully. And we reckon he didn't do it, although he was convicted. So we wrote to the newspapers, and it, there was a headline, actors after 70 years prove other actors innocent. <laughs> so we're very proud of that, very proud of that. Having said that, he knew about it, but he didn't do it. So that was, that was fun, and it was a marvelous part for me being the defense, you know, as you can imagine. That wig, because in England, barristers, lawyers wear wigs. And not because they're bald, it's, it's <laughs> tradition. You don't walk around, you know, I mean, where were you on the 28th? Oh, ah, you're a liar, how about a plea bargain? We don't do that, you know. So, so that's great. Other courtroom dramas I've done, I think very often. Uh, I'll come back to it if I remember. Okay. Any more, sir? Is there anything I dislike about acting in science fiction as opposed to anything else? Some of the special effects are annoying. <laughs> you know, uh, there's one thing that they do which I didn't like at all, which is when the spaceship is going very fast, in fact they can't do it now, it's illegal, <clears throat> they would, uh, in order to get the G effect, uh, would uh, put the air into your cheeks, so that your face were peculiar. And apparently that can be harmful. Because they asked Roger Moore to do it in James Bond, and Roger's, well, phew, no way. He said, no. He said, he didn't like guns. You know, Roger Moore. You know, have you seen Roger Moore as James Bond? When he fires the gun, he doesn't actually fire it. He goes, kick. They put the bangers on afterwards because he doesn't like guns. Did you know that? So, because when he was doing it, he was going like this. And they said, you can't do that, they said, I don't like bangs. So they said, well, we'll put the bangs on afterwards. So that's what happens. Very funny. <laughs> so that, that, that's, yeah, and when they use real dynamite, things like that, I get a little worried. Oh. Yes, sir. The Rattlesnake. Is the Rattlesnake Club in Denver? Yeah, it's a restaurant in Denver where it no longer exists. You're from Denver, right? Okay. It was a marvelous restaurant that I went to, and I had cactus. Have there anybody eaten cactus? Yeah, well, it's great, isn't it? Difficult to describe the taste, kind of... Why are you asking me this question? <laughs> you just want the publicity that you're from Denver, right? Yeah. Anybody else from Denver? Oh, you're from Denver. Oh, you're cute. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I was in Denver, I did a convention, and uh, the lady who was looking after me was a nurse. And I said, why, uh, why are you looking after me? And she said, well, because I'm a nurse. <laughs> I said, do I, do I look that ill? And she said, no, we're very high up here, and we know you smoke a lot. <laughs> so I said, oh. So she, she took me up into the Rockies, and she couldn't breathe. <laughs> Yeah, 
very kindly said to me, I think he is outstanding, as you would say. I, I am so thrilled to get that. I play it virtually every day when I'm there. What a great musician. And we don't have that sort of musician in England. <laughs> it's amazing. And Harry Connick Jr. is also very good, I like him. Um, and I like classical music and so on. And I like Michelle Pfeiffer singing Making Whoopi and the Fabulous Records. <laughs> but then who doesn't? <laughs> I'm not a member of any fan club, though, except the Tom Baker one. Um, <laughs> yes, ma'am. <coughs> I did a show which was under the banner Hammer House of Horror. It was called Guardian of the Abyss. And I was sort of, I don't know what I was, really. Um, I was an acolyte of some devil worshipping group, and it was really awful rubbish. And um, I had to pick up a live chicken, which I didn't like very much, because I never tried it. Um, uh, so that was, I did that one for the money, I'm afraid. Um, it had that look, but it, yeah, quite right. So did the fellow standing next to me, and he was, also, he was the, the chief devil worshipper. I said, why are you doing this? He said, they're paying me more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually it was quite successful. Then people got high in the ratings. <laughs> Would you believe it's, these things happen? It's bad. Have I ever met William Shatner? <laughs> Only in my dreams. <laughs> but he did um, did send me a message. He said, uh, send me a message. I hear you're very rude about me. Uh, but it isn't. I don't mean to be actors stick together, you know. If you're rude about someone, it means you like them. The people I don't mention are the ones I don't like. You know, think about it. And, uh, and, and he said, I hear you're being rude about me. Thanks so much for the publicity. <laughs> but he didn't offer me a part in the movie. I think, in seriousness, I mean, he did a tremendous job. You know, didn't he? The movie's great. Be, he's a very amusing man. And after you did that Saturday Night Live, I mean, I bet you loved it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> you found a life yet, any of you? No? <laughs> if you do, let me know. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Hello, Mr. Reed. I read. <coughs> read. Do I prefer fiction or non-fiction? I like <coughs> to read. <coughs> Good thrillers, Raymond Chandler-esque type of stuff, National Hammer. But uh, I do read a lot of history and biography, because I'm interested in history, particularly military history, particularly your history. It's very fascinating. fascinating. And one thing I would compliment your National Park Service on is that they preserve your battlefields magnificently. I've been around Gettysburg twice now. It's magnificent. Uh, you, you look after them very well, and I wish we did at home. Um, and they're going to put a highway through the Battle of Naseby site, Battle of Naseby, 1649, after which Charles I had his head chopped off. Mm. And we're not preserving it, it's ridiculous, isn't it? So there you go, history, maybe, biography, thrillers. Lady here, down here, who writes very good books. Terry, Terry White. Uh, it's excellent books, very kind, you sent me one, and I bought several others, so you should be getting the royalties soon, yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> have I been offered or done any commercials? Yes, I have. I have. I do voiceovers. I say things like, buy this pen for Christmas. <laughs> Make a loved one happy. You know, one of those. I just did one like that, actually. For Parker pens. For the Christmas market. And then I do other, other things, but mainly voices, not appearing. Because the actors who appear, if you appear, you get paid quite a lot of money, so I wouldn't mind that too much, but it's got to be a good one, you know, I don't want to do rubbish. Oh, uh, he does Pontiac commercials. Oh, really? Um, he said he doesn't drive one. That's naughty of him. I should, the, com the company usually say, please say, I did an American Express advert. In, um, they said to me, uh, it was just after I'd finished Blake 7, and 
it was pouring with rain and it was cold in England. And I saw the producer and he said, we, we, we think you're the kind of man who would have an American Express car. And I said, really? And uh, he said, yes, would you do this advertisement for us? And I said, yes. He said, unfortunately, we're filming it in Monte Carlo and Nice in the south of France. And I said, oh dear me, how terrible. Um, and where are we staying? And they just opened the Hyatt, actually. Uh, Hyatt Regency in Nice. So he said, well, I'm afraid we've got to stay there. And I said, oh dear, well, how much is it? And it's about a thousand dollars a night suite. Gosh, I can't bear it. Uh, so I went. And I did this advertisement. Do you want me to do it for you? There's an American actor who's insulting me. And he's going, oh, I see. I had several calls to Edinburgh. And um, you have room service here and all that sort of thing. And then I go, American Express. <laughs> and he go, what? <laughs> That's different, sir. <laughs> Come back to me going, yeah. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and, uh, I was a week in the south of France. All expenses paid for that. Uh, you think I was going to turn that one down? No way. <laughs> It was terrific. I had a great time. Great time. The actor was called William Hootkins. Do you know who I mean? Yeah. yeah Bill Hootkins. You've heard of him. Okay. Very kind. Comes from the great state of Texas. So. I did a movie with uh, Patrick McLean in about 1967. It's called Mr. Jericho. Yes. Mm. I remember that, yes. Dear, it was a terrible film. It was the first one I ever did. Mm. Yes, that was dreadful. There were a lot of pretty girls in it, though. And a very nice American lady, what was her name? Connie Stevens. You know what I mean? She was in it. She was very charming. Very nice person. Who hasn't had a question? Was it what Oh, no, you have, right. Uh, you two gentlemen there, then. We'll start with the... Oh, what well, is it? Uh, you. You, uh, yes, okay. Oh, you're not ma'am. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Okay. There's a large gentleman in front of you. Yeah. Am I planning on writing any more books? The question has been asked, and the answer is yes. But I'm afraid it's only in the planning state. Oh, well, I'm about a third of the way through. You know, that's taken a year, so I mean, round right about. 2022, it should be published. <laughs> Futuristic press. And the gentleman. Do you remember what part of England you did the location shots from Place 7? And do you mind the location shots? Right, thank you. Uh, the gentleman asks, do I remember uh, where in England uh, that we did, or Britain, that we did the location shots for Place 7? Yes, I do. And he also asks, do I mind doing location shots? And it really rather depends where they are. If you're going to be away in a nice area, with good restaurants and things like that, that's fine. But if you're some pitsy place and you're away at home, you know. uh, But generally speaking, we do quite well. We, we filmed in the more, very far north of England, near Holy Island. Bamburgh, it's called. And we also filmed on the Yorkshire Moors. Uh, at Arms Fifth Crag, it's called. It's a very craggy, heathery, rugged area. And that's where I twisted my ankle. I was walking with a, a ray gun and a direction finder, and I twisted my ankle very badly, and one of the crew came over and smashed it back into place. <laughs> uh, he, he, and then I was taken to hospital, and the doctor said to me, oh my God, why are you dressed like this? <laughs> Because what happens is that she's running, 
and I'm behind the camera here, and as she went past, here like this, and, and, and it looks as if I've been running as well. You see. So uh, we did that. And then when I went back to the doctor ten days later, he said, I am so sorry. I have told my daughter that I treated you the other day. I did not realize you were Avon. I am abject. <laughs> I had a lot of fun doing that, yes I did. I enjoyed myself immensely. Five minutes, that's all I got. Why, is there something important coming up to me? I enjoyed it immensely, yes, it was a lot of fun. Lost one. Oh, there you are, yes, a lot of fun, I did. But as I only have five minutes left, because then I must have been Make way for Bill. Uh, Tom. Uh, I, uh, will answer some questions. Yes, sir. Bearded gentleman. I don't know. It's a hypothetical question. Will Avon ever do battle against Picard? <laughs> will Avon do battle against... Oh, Patrick Stewart. It's too easy. Uh, I, I regret to say I haven't seen any of Star Trek The New Generation. Um, it's, it's nothing much, it says Daniel. <laughs> but the, the old one was pretty good. I mean, with the, I enjoy the older ones so much because I meet, I have met uh, several of the cast, uh, Michelle Nichols and I. Uh, had a very pleasant time at the convention. She was delightful, maybe. Uh, we'll have dinner together, darling. Oh, yes, I said. <laughs> and I did. She was delightful and uh, various others. So I have a special interest now when I look at the older Star Treks. And it's nice to see Bill Williams. Skinny, yes. Her suit, yes. Right. Well, as they only gave me five minutes, let's take. Uh, Roughly three sections. A question on this side, yes, the a gentleman there. Yes, sir. Um, has anybody asked you about your, any memories you might have about the episode you did in Doctor Who? Do I remember anything about the episode I did in Doctor Who? Anything? Yes, I would have to. I, um, <laughs> yes, I did. I played a character called Tekka in a couple of episodes of Doctor Who. Um, it was quite fun. Uh, Colin Baker is a friend, and it was nice to uh, work with him. They paid me, which was even nicer, and uh, I wanted to play it a certain way. They didn't want me to play it that way. Uh, we compromised, meaning I did it my way, and uh, <laughs> we got on fine, yes. We didn't at the time. Today, MT and I had a little contretemps, but um, after that, that was fine. J and T and friends, so it's great. I mean, I just think it was a lousy script job. He said, yeah, you're right. Uh, so, but it was fun to do. Yes. Right. And I will take one from here. Oh. Your hand went up there. Didn't you? you get this question right, you know. You get an evening out with Tom Baker. About that. <laughs> you get it wrong, you get two evenings out with Tom Baker. <laughs> what was the name of the book that I wrote? <laughs> you met my agent? Good. You want to know, is it any good? <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> How many years did I take to write it? <laughs> three months. At your age, three months would seem like three years. At my age, it seems like three minutes, really. Mm. Okay. Uh, we'll take... Uh, How long have I got? <coughs> That's a rude sign in the mood. <laughs> Two minutes I have. <laughs> so we'll take two questions slowly. Uh, and there we have them. Should we start with you, ma'am, and then you? Uh, do I find it difficult to separate myself from the profession? Oh, when I go 
fancy a movie or a play, do I find it difficult to separate myself? Yes. Yes, I do. Particularly if it's not a good movie or a good play, or rather there are bad actors and bad performances. I want to keep the TV and, you know, and things like that. But generally speaking, I avoid those. I switch them off if they're TV shows or videos. It's, and if they play, I leave. Um, but fortunately, you can usually tell uh, whether it's any good or not. Some critics uh, are quite useful to read. So you, I knew that Christine Walker was going to be good as Coriolanus. Although I went to, uh, I think it was the second night, so I haven't seen any reviews, but I figured it'd be pretty good if he was. So, uh, yes, it's difficult, but once they're good, you, I lose myself. I mean, in the action movies, I lose myself. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Great, love it. I'll be back. <laughs> Wonderful, I love all that. Uh, uh, well, the film I loved recently was Dances with Wolves. Um, magnificent film. Magnificent. So now you are. Kevin, if you're listening, we'll do the sequel. We'll Prances with Jerbins. <laughs> okay, and then we decided we would take your question. I have written a Blake 7, a gentleman asked, I wrote a Blake 7 episode where Villa saves Avon. Well, um, we were on location uh, and there was a strike by technicians and also writers, some writers, not all of them. And the producer at the time said we were in a lot of trouble because we were short of scripts. This was on a Friday. And I said, when do you need them? He said, Monday. I said, sure, I'll bring them on in. And he said, you can't write a script in the weekend. I said, I can. So I did, and I took it in. And I thought, well, uh, as I'm writing about my own character, if I make myself the hero all the time, they'll look at it and go, uh, you know, building up his part, you know, and I, so I wrote one and I got the girl, all of them. You know, and, uh, so I thought, well, we'll build Villa up. So I wrote it, wrote it for Villa, yes. They all leave me, and I'm getting beaten up. Do you ever see the chase on Brander? I'm getting beaten up like him, you know. So the man walks in and says, I thought you were a man, my kind of man, look at you, you're a weakling, and I'm going, pain and agony, great stuff. And <laughs> up in the spaceship, uh, Taran's going, where's Avon? I don't know, some time on the planet. Well, now might be a good way to, time to leave, you know. <laughs> um, so they leave, and uh, then Villa walks through the door with a sort of shotgun and says, we're going back. <laughs> and they go back, and with one bound, I'm free. <laughs> And as we fly off into the sunset, several sunsets, um, Serverland looks at my picture, which he always carried around her neck, and uh, says, My kind of man. Um, so it was a great episode, and uh, they never did it. No, no, they didn't do it. And actually, the script editor said to me, Actors should stick to acting. He said, writers should write. I said, you mean like William Shakespeare, uh, who was an actor, Harold Pinter, who was an actor, John Osborne, who was an actor, and I didn't go down too well. So there you are. One final question, and then I will get off the stage. I'll wait. But what of your English not taking a question from you? You can ask me in the bar afterwards. Um, So, you get it. You've got two fingers up as well. What are you trying to do to me? Uh, you got two questions? Or? The gentleman asked if I was ever offered the part of Doctor Who, would I take it? The answer is yes. But I would do it my way. Yeah. <laughs> 